This is going to be your guide to using Iron Crown in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. I shouldn't have started with Gouging Fire. It's like the most busted Paradox Pokemon release, and now everything else just doesn't look that crazy. This just feels like an alright pseudo legendary Pokemon. It's got bulk, but as we saw with Raging Bolt, it's not a tank. Like that, that bulky offense, it, it kind of puts it in a weird spot, and we have kind of just the same thing with Iron Crown. So, few things to play around with it. It is the Steel Psychic typing. Seen this before with Metagross. And got a lot of similarities. So it's like a faster Metagross that doesn't hit as hard. And slightly more durable on the special defense. But then less durable on the defense. I don't know if that's a recipe for success. And then it comes down to its new signature move. Tachyon Cutter. I think that's how you pronounce it. Hits twice. Oh, doesn't ch Wow. So a 100 base power move for free. Effectively just new dragon darts. But also doesn't check accuracy. Why does Game Freak hate evasion so much when it just hasn't been relevant for a long time? Who on the Game Freak battle testing team is hurting everyone else with cheese so much to where it's just not allowed to be viable? I don't know. Either way, we have 122 on the special attack. We have the numbers for the damage. So, so Valley damage analog, and we do about 60%. So that's just a solid hit that's right there. And as we saw in the trailer, it KOs Mimikyu. It breaks the thing, and then it does damage. Also really good for responding to substitute. As we can see, without any damage modification, no Terra, no boosting, no choice specs, or anything like that, we're doing 25% on the first hit guaranteed. So break sub, and then actually get damage through on the opponent. Now, it is a super effective hit into Mimikyu, but it also showed, like, all the damage that ends up coming across with this. The weird thing is, it feels like Game Freak is balancing for several generations ago, because they nerfed Disguise, and then Mimikyu hasn't been that much of a threat. I, I don't even think it's existed in VGC at all, but they showed it in the VGC trailer, like, here's, here's your solution to the problem that doesn't exist anymore. Tachyon Cutter. All right. And let's go for the special attack quark drive. Oh, that's a hit. Like, you just boost energy the modest. GG easy. And then the choice specs damage also hurts. So yeah, that's the power of base power, especially when comparing it to something like the Raging Bolt. Well, it gets Calm Mind, and that opens up the boost energy because you're not, like, stuck on a choice band or something. And it's actually strong, but I think this is the only moveset for Iron Crown, like, I was going through the rest of this, well, why use Flash Cannon when you have Power Creep Flash Cannon into Insanity? Iron Defense, I mean, we're not, like, a tanky stall Pokemon. Sacred Sword, we're not physical at all. Metal Sound means we might have a new 7-star Terror Raid event Pokemon, but I don't see anything else for competitive or what, you're, what else you're supposed to do in something like doubles. You get the Quark Drive set up. You have room to set up on a Calm Mind, and in singles, like, you're feeling strong, but you have to cut your special attack. So it's not this, you know, Choice Scarf, Choice Specs at the same time sounds really scary, but we do have to cut our numbers, so that's going to be 172 EVs. I mean, going into bulk isn't a bad thing. And then the damage, actually, wow, I thought we were going to lose a lot more on those numbers, which means... Uh, Fluttermane. I'm, I'm, we, we probably just clap a Fluttermane, no? Yeah, it, it's gone. Even though it's not a relevant Pokemon anymore, what about Meowskareta? Wow, yeah, we, we take out a Meowskareta, and then it actually just pops through the Sash. If you have a Calm Mind up, or you're just running Choice Specs, Sash, sweeping Pokemon, do not get to exist. It's not just Mimikyu, and it actually gets even crazier on the Terra Steel, because then we're just finding... 30% more damage. Okay, you don't find any magical, incredible, hard winning matchups. Still going to be a three hit KO into the Ting Lu, but like you survive a not fully invested Earthquakes. Like, super effective hit from a bulky attacker, you just kind of tank, and you're going to be faster than them even without like speed investment or anything. So the Twin Beam is going to come through and be good damage, which means if like they got chipped or if you're going up into like certain other Pokemon matchups. Yeah, it's looking pretty nice. Twin Beam one-shots the max hit points, max defense Gargantasaur. So that means it's going to have to Terra into something. Let's just say it's like Terra Ghost. So we know that's a two-hit KO, but it just kind of shows like, what is it supposed to do? It Salt Cures for a little bit of damage. Now it does turn into a 25% Salt Cure, 
but that's a trade. So Gargantasalt is forced to ghost to survive and then gets Assault Cure down and then immediately dies the next turn. I'm wondering if Game Freak thought any of this through. It's like when they designed Iron Crown, they forgot that it can go Terra and find a lot of bonus damage. That now just means, wait, it's outspeeding everything because it's a 98 that can find a plus one. And then it just gets the damage otherwise. Also with Calm Mind, like if you're this fast, just naturally for free, and you come in on a special attacker, you outspeed with Calm Mind. So now this bulk just gets even crazier. They can't do anything to you. Do you Calm Mind again, or do you just one-shot them after that? And then it's one-shot City, and they can't sash it. But the main failing of Iron Crown is going to be coverage. So Steel-type Pokemon, they can resist, and they can respawn. They'll either have like an Earthquake or something, Golden Go is an interesting Pokemon because like Calm Mind versus the Nasty Plot. So I think we actually need to look at that. Ah, interesting. If you don't go Terra Steel, it goes, you Calm Mind, Golden Go Nasty Plots. You hit it for whatever damage, Golden Go comes in with a Shadow Ball and that's a KO. So you can debate it on the Terra Steel and then you have a two hit KO in return. So Twin Beam for like 55%, Shadow Ball you to half, and then you outspeed and Twin Beam it and take it out. So even some of the bad matchups, like, yeah, if it's a special attacker, it doesn't matter because then you get the Calm Mind advantage and now you're still a 40% this Pokemon hanging around that also has the plus one speed boost from the Quark Drive and all the other stuff going on and you're you're untouchable. What's Trashapult going to do? Die, of course. It's only 8875 for a pseudo-legendary Pokemon. So yeah, we actually find the numbers to be pretty good. 100, 100? Okay, we don't catch that. So like 100 and then 90-ish is the KO when we go Terra Steel on the plus one, even with the not maxed out special attack. Again, did Game Freak think this one through? Dang, the Dragonite matchup is interesting because that first hit is going to get stuffed out by the multi-scale, but then the second hit still does a lot and the total damage is like 80%. And if you have, like, the plus one from the booster energy, not even Dragon Dance Dragonite catches that on the 80 speed. Oh, this thing might actually be terrifying. Oh, yeah, now that I'm thinking about it, this is like giving you a Quiver Dance instead of a Calm Mind. So you get a one-off Quiver Dance, which means if you come in with that booster energy and you don't get forced out and you make it stick and you get the entire value out of that, then you win. But also, booster energy just doesn't matter sometimes. If you take out a Sweeper and then you get phased or you have to switch out, but the rest of the team is slower than your 98, which happens since we're in like a more bulky kind of meta for Generation 9. You're, you're still just playing Pokemon with like the plus one, plus one and doing crazy amounts of damage. And I was thinking you got to go Psychic Noise over Psychic because the utility of stopping healing is just way too insane. And this is your bread and butter move that you're also boosting with Terra that has more base damage. So it's not like, oh man, I need that Psychic to find the KO. Maybe into like Poison types, but then you're still plus one using super effective Psychic Noise and that's going to be fine. Air Slash? Mostly only because I think it's the only other option. However, if you're outspeeding the opponent and maybe you just don't have enough damage or something weird is going on, throw out the Air Slash. 30% chance to make the opponent flinch. Could just be a 30% chance to save the game and then you find the follow-up damage or something like that and you're not choice locked in. So I think there is like an angle where... This Pokemon could just get up and go on the choice specs. Uh, that also opens up the Modest, which makes some of your damage numbers a little better. And I don't know about speed tiers. Like, do you just max speed and just hope you catch things? Is there, like, something more specific that gives you a little bit more durability? But overall, like, you can super duper wall break with this and crush an insane amount of damage. Especially if you go Terra Steel. Like, you just do this, Terra Steel, no resist, the opponent's KO'd. And if you outspeed them because they're bulky... It's, it's still, it's just so free. Um, and then you just keep on doing that. Even a resisted hit. Now it's, you outspeed, resisted hit, they hit you, and then you KO them. And even if you get outsped, you're bulky, so you survive getting outsped. And then anything that's going to be that fast is frail, and then gets KO'd. Might be a threat. I think this Pokemon could materialize into, wait, I, I lost the game? Oh, shucks kind of Pokemon. So if you guys enjoyed the video, hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.